All righty. All right, let's do it. Here we go. It's week. Oh, shit. What week is it? Is it week eight? Week eight. Yeah, there we go. All right, here we go. It's week eight on the Out of Pocket Pod, and we are still treading water here, 20 and 21 on the season. It was an up and down week last week, but we hit that best bet with Sparty. Anyway, I don't know. I'm feeling good. I'm Tony. The next voice you'll hear is Ben. How's it going, Ben? Doing well, doing well. I think um, I think for three weeks in a row, our best bet is hit. If I that believe, sounds, yeah, definitely, yeah, right. I think so. I think so. So, um, feeling good about that. Feeling good about that. Um, excited about this week of football. Uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of commenters are, are saying that this is um, uh, an unexciting week, but um, I totally disagree. I think we have some very interesting um, conference matchups. Uh, not, not a lot of um, matchups with implications for. Uh, Conference championship uh, contention, but uh, regardless, some some interesting games to um, that will determine sort of the the tenor of the rest of the season for many teams. So I, I, I'm very excited about this weekend of college football. Hey, I find it hard to believe that there's ever a weekend of college football you're not excited for. True. I'm gonna say this. I like what Sparty did. With their rookie quarter, with their freshman quarterback, I was thrilled that Sparty had that cover all day. That was a sweet bet. Yeah, yeah. If 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 bet. Michigan didn't look like the best team in the country, I, I would be considering a, a Sparty this weekend. But that's a that's a tall that's a tall order. That that young man, uh, what's his name, Hauser? Yeah. That young man. Yeah, that young man, he he's got a lot to learn. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be a lot of lessons against the Wolverines. That that much is for sure. Yeah. Uh yeah. No. Um okay. All right. Good. Let's dive into this week. Rotation three six five, three six six. Wisconsin playing two and a half at the Illini on a total of forty two. There's some forty two and a half out here if you want to play the under. But uh but what are you thinking? Um, Tanner Mordecai is out. He sustained a hand injury in the Iowa game. And we have is that what freshman. you're blaming? Is that what you're blaming their defeat on? On the no. quarterback injury? No, oh, okay. just I'm not. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just telling you that's the situation. Okay. Um, and, uh, now we have a rookie quarterback who was not great in that game, um, going on the road here. Um, in a uh, Big Ten West or a rivalry matchup. Um, it looks like Illinois might be starting to get its groove back um, after beating Maryland um, pretty handedly. Um, obviously, they struggled in the, in the beginning of the year, losing uh, to Toledo the first week of the game. But perhaps, perhaps things are starting to turn around. Um, so we have Wisconsin coming to Bielema's house, right? Coming to Bielema's house, knows how to play against Wisconsin. Um, Does he? Because now, what now, was the we, score well, the last time they played? Um, okay. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, 10 to 30. Friggin', well, oh, wait, no. Illinois won that matchup, didn't they? 30, 40. Yeah, probably. I'm reading that backwards. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. There you go. The last time at this venue, it was 24 to nothing, Wisconsin. Okay. Well, that was week one of, of – I mean, that was year one of Bielema. Year two of Bielema. Anyway, Bielema knows how to play this kind of game because with the, with the young quarterback, like, they're not going to be able to pass the ball, right? So this is going to be run the ball with, with Braylon Allen. Um, and even though – Illinois' defense is worse this year. That's mostly because of their their cornerbacks uh, that went to the NFL. Um, their defensive line is still quite stout. So I think Bielema is going to be able to uh, – Bielema and the defense will stack the box, um, make Wisconsin's offense very one-dimensional. Now, I still think Wisconsin could win this game, 
but I think this is going to be a very low scoring affair. So I think we should be betting on Wisconsin team total under 21 and a half. I think this could be a 20 to 14 kind of game or obviously, you know, um, Wisconsin's offense could sputter and Illinois has an outright win. Um, but that's, that's the way I'm leaning. A very one-dimensional offense against a stout defense, a coach that has a bee in his bonnet with his team, knows how to play um, against this kind of team versus a rookie quarterback on the road, Wisconsin team total under 21 and a half. So why not just take the under 42 and a half for the game? Is my question. Um, because Illinois, I'm just a little nervous because of this game versus Maryland they played last week, um, which I did not watch, to be perfectly frank. Um, but in this game versus Maryland, they did put up 27 points. Um, you know, it's not wasn't really that fluky of a result, as far as I can tell. Um, somewhat comparable um, amount of yards gained, similar number of turnovers, um, similar number of third down and fourth downs converted. Um, I just think Illinois might have might have found their groove back a little bit. That's that's why I'm a little concerned that Illinois, you know might be able to move the ball just a little bit through the air. That's that's why I'm going with this angle, 21 and a half. And the young quarterback could, could um, you know, we could be in, in a position for a pick six or two, weird fumble, I don't know. But that's that's the angle I'm taking, the, the Wisconsin team total under 21 and a half. Okay, then. I won't fade it. I don't. Uh, I won't lie to you. I don't love it, but I'm not going to fade it. Um, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like if I believed, if I had this view on where the game was going, I feel like I would just, like, take the Illini money line. Mm, mm, I'm, see, we don't really know who Illinois is right now, just because the season that they've had is so mixed, but perhaps they're turning the page here post this Maryland win. I think you could see an explosive Illinois or still a conservative Illinois unable to move the ball through the air. I think both of those things you could potentially see happen. All right. All right. I dig it. Very well, Ben. Fair enough. <clears throat> All right. Next one up, rotation 369-370. The Golden Gophers are going to Iowa City. The Hawkeyes land three and a half on a total of 32 and a half. And I'm not going to lie to you. I like the Gophers and the under if, uh, if you put a gun to my head. Like, I wouldn't necessarily actually bet the game, but, like, I definitely have a lead at the moment. Well, you and I are um, aligned, brother, 100%. So every week I have bet on this Iowa Iowa team this year. Every single week. I have not watched every single moment of every game. Um, And one of the games I wasn't able to watch because I don't have Peacock. That was the Purdue game. But I bet on them. Um, And the past few weeks... Uh, you know, I got Iowa at seven. That was a ten or twelve, depending on where it was in the week versus first Michigan State. But Iowa's been really good to me. But I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it here. Um, you you can't pass for thirty six yards in a game and expect to win. You can't be expecting that to happen. Um, This is a team that uh, lost one of its tight ends early in the season. Their number one pass catcher, Eric All, got hurt in this game. His season's over. Cade McNamara, the starting quarterback, is hurt. 
Deacon Hill, the backup is in. And so even though um, I think the offensive line and the running game is finally starting to gel and the defense is excellent, like they're, they are one mistake away from, from losing this game. They just don't have the ability to score. Like what, what they're doing is not repeatable. Um, an 82-yard touchdown run, um, that's just not repeatable. Like hurting Tanner Mordecai, like they can't kill every single quarterback. That's not repeatable. Um, and like I've, I've legit become an Iowa fan, um, and I listen to Iowa podcast, an Iowa podcast. I'm on Iowa Reddit. Um, I also oh listen God. to other college football podcasts um, and, you know, I- I encounter articles about Iowa on social media. A couple things. The Iowa fans, after being furious the past few weeks, are smug as all fucking hell right now. Smug, smug, smug. Because they have, mm. to, they have the head-to-head one with Wisconsin in the Big Ten West. They're far too smug. They're like... It's, Sit back and enjoy the the, the punting and, and um, defensive scores. While all the other weeks they thought this was, you know, this offense was embarrassing. The, the Ferenc family needs to get out of here. Yada yada yada. They're too fucking smug. Um, someone, I was listening to a podcast on my way back from the gym today. Someone said Iowa winning the Big Ten West was inevitable. There's an article. Oh my god. In the, there's an uh, there's an article in the Atlantic, um, in the, it's not the Atlantic, excuse me, very different in the Athletic that says yeah, I assume be, that's what could, you very bet. different, yeah. very different. Could, are are we are we are we going to see an eleven and one Iowa reach the college football playoff? Like oh. that's a fucking article that someone wrote. So there is so much goddamn bulletin board material here for for Minnesota a team that plays in a very similar way and their offense is bad, but they they can take deep shots. Um, PJ Fleck has never won this matchup against the the Francis. Never. Like, and and this is going to be his chance. (laughs) This is his chance. So I think Iowa probably will win this game just because their defense is so physical but if I'm getting outside the key number of three and a half, I'm I'm grabbing Minnesota. Also, extremely defense uh, defensive oriented team can run the ball. Like I, I, if there's one slip up, Iowa can lose this game really easily. And there's going to be 15 mile mile per hour winds in Iowa City on Saturday, as currently forecasted. Um, anything can happen. So in this type of matchup. Give me the dog. Um, and, you know, I have a future on Iowa to win the Big Ten West. Um, um, I, I bet this at three at six and a half when it was available. I might wait a little bit, but will most likely be on the, on the money line as well. Because I'd love to be able to feel secure about that Big Ten West ticket and cash, cash the six and a half. But the three and a half, I would bet it again. But I think I'll, I, I'll go on the money line there. At this I point, have since I have the six it. and a half in my pocket. Well, that was a good time to bet Minnesota plus six and a half. That's a very good time to bet. <clears throat> and uh, and yeah, and yeah, we like to go for it, catching the point. All right. Next one up, rotation three seven one three seven two, the Texas Tech Red Raiders are headed to Provo. They're laying four and a half to the BYU Cougars. Mazzola, 52 and a half. I I was out of pocket on the Cougars last week. Me too. A shame to say. Um, Which makes me want to chase this week, but that's a bit degenerate. I don't know. I should probably leave the game alone. But, uh, but, But I think you have a lead. I do. I do. Um, so, for the past few years, I've had a difficult read on on BYU. 
right. difficult time, difficult time um, gambling on them. This is a team that can, you know, beat an Arkansas and then the next week shit to bed versus a much worse opponent, a much objectively worse opponent. Um, and I will thank Reddit for this stat that I stumbled across. Okay. B- let, let, me, let me read this to you. <clears throat> BYU's day game issues seem to date back to 20, the 2019 season. Since that year, a season where Kalani Sataki was coaching for his job to earn a contract extension, BYU is 14-3 in games that kick off before <laughs> 6 p.m. For games that kick at 6 p.m. or later, the record is 26-3, and three, and that's 89.6% win rate. <laughs> what the fuck? Yes. No, he, no, he isn't like 90% in prime time. Uh, that, those stats were compiled, compiled by Cougar Nation Sports Saturday and Cougar Nation producer. Wait a minute. Oh, Black. wait a minute. You mean if it's like, oh, if it's 7 p.m. in Provo. So if it's like 10 p.m. It, here. Um, most likely. Okay. Local kick time only. Local kick time only. Okay. Cause, Local okay. kick time only. Sure. Now. Sure. Now, this, this game, game will be at 4 o'clock in Provo. Yes, but it will turn tonight. <laughs> it will turn tonight. Anyway, uh-huh. the, the, real think, the real thinking here is um, Texas Tech's quarterback um, got hurt, Baron Morton. Morton. He is a quote-unquote game-time decision. Their backup is totally unplayable. Um, he was terrible last week, absolutely unplayable. Um, Texas Tech, he, he, yes, he's been characterized as a game-time decision, um, but Texas Tech has the bye next week. So why would you jeopardize the your, the remainder of your season, um, playing bring like bringing uh, Baron Morton back early this week to potentially re re injure or re aggravate an injury this week? I think they're going to go with with the backup, who's absolutely terrible, um, young freshman on the road in BYU. Um, I, I'm I'm money line here. For, for BYU. They will win this game outright. Brigham Young to win the game in Provo. Well, sir. We, I feel like the wise thing to do is to grade that at four and a half. But, but what is the money line out of curiosity? Uh, the money line is... Taking BYU to win. BYU has been bad. They have betrayed everyone. The best um, is 168. Uh, They beat Cincinnati at home at night. Let's go ahead and grade. I remember that. I remember that. The North remembers. Let's grade that at 155. I'm sure that's more prevailing. Okay. We got FanDuel. FanDuel 168. Fan duel. All right. Well, you know I'm boycotting them. Mm-hmm. But anyway, fair enough. Rotation three eight one three eight two. This one is mine. It's the Utah Utes who've beaten the USC Trojans three straight goes. Yet here the Trojans are laying seven in the Coliseum on a total of fifty six. And I do not think it is donkey brain to expect the Trojans to play well. I think they'll bounce back from what was a skull fucking in South Bend. The Notre Dame defense played well from start to finish. The Notre Dame offense was whatever, but the Notre Dame defense played very well. And hey, you know, the defense gets paid, too. You would expect USC to be shattered after that loss. 
but I think this Utah Utes team is exactly the right opponent to keep their attention on. Nobody wants to lose to the Utes here. Lincoln Riley does not want to get teabagged here. Caleb Williams doesn't want to get teabagged here. The USC defense, who let up that frankly amazing comeback last season, doesn't want to be here and lose. 43 to 42, the Utes won last year. Do you remember that game? Well, was that the conference championship game, or that was in the middle of the season? I mean, the I regular season game. Yeah, that's right. The co- well, the conference championship game was an absolute sea bag. Yeah, that was 47-24. But the Utes won the regular season game. They were down 42-28 and won that shit. 43-42, walk off two point conversion. It was a great game. Whatever. You didn't stay up for it. Point is, no, of USC course I didn't. is going to want to fuck these guys. <laughs> and I think that they probably can. I think it makes sense to lay the seven in this spot. Most people would want to take it, but I think this is the right spot to lay it. Now, okay. So if you if USC is going to cover the seven, can you in in your sort of um, theory of the game, how many points do you think Utah scores? The I, I mean the Utes have not been doing a good job of scoring more than like seventeen to twenty one points. Yeah, but this is a, a terrible run defense. But okay, so let's say twenty one you said seventy to twenty one, you want to say twenty points? Something like that? Okay. Maybe. Look at these games. Look at look at these games that USC has played. Um twenty eight to fifty six, fourteen to sixty six, ten to fifty six, forty two to twenty eight, forty eight to forty one. 41 to 43, 20 to 48. Like, if if there's a world where, like, Lincoln and Caleb Williams are going to exact revenge against Utah, and we also can think that Utah will score about 20 points, why is this total only about 56-55? Um, I don't know. I guess the game is on draft. We're going to play it at a slow pace, something like that. This opened at 57 and a half and was bet down to 55 and a half at FanDuel. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Because the way I look at this, I think the over is an easy winner. But um, clearly we're not getting that sense from the market or really even the odds makers. I would Hmm. sooner bet the USC alternate spread than bet the over. Because if the game goes over, USC definitely pulled away. And I bet you you could get a better price on, like, Trojans minus 15 or minus 16 and a half or some shit like that as but opposed to the parlay. The Trojans haven't been able to really pull away from anyone in the past few weeks. Um, well, listen, they they ran out of steam in the altitude. That was unlucky. That was and then unlucky. at home versus Arizona's backup quarterback? In triple overtime? The, the Wildcats. Gosh, they got him. No, the Wildcats got him. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Uh, you know, Riley's also not a good coach. Not a great, you know, it's not, he's, he's more good at putting a team together than, you know, planning out the game. Those are different skill sets. Why is this only 56? 
I mean, I I'm going to say, I bet you it's down to pink. Or the odds makers think Utah is going to put the clamps on USC. If you want to go ahead and parlay the Utes in the under, be my guest there. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But... No. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I need to think about this. I, I'm getting uh, – this is very confusing. This is a, this is a confusing total. Okay. Well, we'll see how we feel about it going forward. But uh, but yeah, we're we're we're, we're great at, at Utah, at Utah Lane Seven, at, at USC Lane Seven to Utah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Rotation four zero seven four zero eight. Northwestern. The Northwestern Wildcats are visiting the black shirt. Nebraska lay in 11 in Lincoln on a total of 41. Now, I know you're not trying to take the points right now. Oh, yeah, I am. God bless it. Why? Why would that be your lean of all the bets in this game? You have four bets you could make. Why did you take the Wildcats? This is what the point spread was for Northern Illinois at home at Nebraska this year. It's disrespectful. These are Big uh, Ten West are opponents. You sure? Yes. These are Big Ten West opponents who know each other. No, um, do they know each other? Yes, they do, of course. Do they know Matt Rule? No, they might not know Matt Rule, but, mm-hmm. but who cares? Matt, Matt Rule ain't ain't him, as they say. Mm. As this team stinks. This team, absolutely, mm. this Nebraska team stinks. Northwestern had a bye last week. You can look at this game. Okay, so let's look at the, at, at the Wildcats. Northwestern, um, they beat Minnesota, okay, three weeks ago in, mm. um, in overtime. And that was not fluky. They outgained them by over 100 yards and even committed a turnover but still won that game. Um, They were tied with Penn State, I think, through, through, let's see. They were tied with Penn State through the half of that game. Ben Bryant got hurt in that game and didn't play versus Howard. They've now had a bye, and Ben Bryant is coming back. Let's also look at the rest of their schedule before that. So I, I think I think this team is starting to gel a little bit after all the chaos in the off season. But but let's look at the beginning part of their schedule, right? So okay, we we discussed that. But let's look at the first three games. They lose on the road at Rutgers, twenty four to seven. Rutgers is about to go to a bowl. Okay, this is not a bad Rutgers team. They okay. beat the crap. They beat the crap out of UTEP, thirty-eight to seven, as they should, and then went uh, on the road. And then they went on the road at Duke, and lost thirty-eight to fourteen. This is a damn good Duke team. This is a Duke team that almost beat Notre Dame. Like that is not a blemish on on the resume. Like that's a blemish on the resume in week three, but not in week eight. I think this team is better than we think they are. And Nebraska stinks. It's too many points. This is exactly what they laid for Northern Illinois. And that's just plain disrespectful. They get their quarterback back after the bye. They're gonna, this is the healthiest they're going to be. Nebraska hasn't had their bye yet. No, no this is – Nebraska's off the bye also. Oh, um, crap, are they? Yeah. Um, but you sure? But also – yes, yes. But but also – I also neglected to mention Minnesota was off the bye. They're also off the bye, which which makes yes. it kind of also a good spot. But, but no, I 
here's why I want to go head to head with you. First of all, I want to throw out all of the poison memories that the Huskers have. New day, new black shirt, new group under a new head man. I like Matt Rule off the bye with time to scheme. I like the Huskers as a program. 11 is a lot, but I'll it's still lay it into you. It is a lot, okay. but I'll still lay it into you because I'll, I'll, I'll like, I, am a, I am a beast in that way. Okay, so like, then uh, then put – Put your actual – put your money where your mouth is and in, in Jersey City, in Jersey City this Saturday, we will watch the Big, Big Ten Network together, and um, I'll, I'll watch you have a little shit there. You're very, you're, you're very funny. Okay, <laughs> then. Okay, then. You have a deal. You have a deal, <laughs> sir. <laughs> All right, listen up. It, it, are the Gophers our best bet? Because yes. I don't know. It's not yes. like that, right? Yep. Yep. A million percent. Yeah. All right, I like that. Um, That's a million Gophers. percent. Bust the hook. Expect them to be nip and tuck with the Hawkeyes. Yeah. And I and it's like, and that that athletic article is unconscionable. Like. Can Iowa go on the road and lose to, lose to Northwestern? Yes. Could Iowa, Iowa lose to Rutgers at home? Yes. Could Iowa lose to Illinois at home? Yes. Could they go on the road at the end of the year and lose to Nebraska? Yes. These are all terribly losable games. <laughs> like, You're what such the a fuck hater. are you talking they're about? Not, they're not going to lose to all those teams. No, 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 no. I don't think they're going to lose to all those teams. But the athletic comment was – so everyone's saying, like, oh, yes, they are now – Oh, I see. They're saying West. they couldn't lose to Rutgers. Nah, they're not going to lose to Rutgers. Nah. Mm-hmm. They could lose to they, Illinois. They, they could almost lost to Illinois road. last year. Yeah, they could – they did that lose that to Illinois. Game? They lost. They lost to Illinois. Really? Yeah. We were on Iowa. I thought we, we, I thought we won that under. bet. I thought we, we won we that bet. We were on bet. the under, I think. Are you sure? Are you sure we didn't win that bet? <laughs> Dude. Okay. I could have sworn we won that bet. Or did we bet on Illinois, do you think? It was Illinois, not the Iowa 6. I think we had... Oh, we had I the think, hook. That's right. We had the yeah, hook. Maybe, we covered by maybe. the half point. That's maybe. what happened. That was maybe. a sweet game. Okay. Six to nine. Yeah. Covered yeah. three and a half. Fuck <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was sweet. Oh, my God. This is exactly what's going to happen in this Minnesota game. I bet that's the final score. <laughs> <laughs> covered by the 